This weekend I brought my stereo box combat robot, which I called Crave Monster, as well as my Antweight Drum Spinner Danger Zone to the Central Illinois Bot Brawl. The first match for the Crave Monster was against No, which is a pusher bot that also has a lifting arm, but the lifting arm couldn't get under the wedge on the front of Crave Monster, so it wasn't very effective. Unfortunately, that lifting arm was uh, sticking out in front of No, and it made it hard to grab and bite down on the entire robot. Most of the time I was biting down, and the uh, No robot wouldn't fit fully into the cereal box's mouth just because of that lifting wire. Despite No not really fitting into the mouth of Crave Monster, the front lip of the dustpan was able to I could actuate it up and down. So I was able to actuate it up, and that helped pull the wheels of No a little bit off the ground and give me a little bit more control. After that first win for the Crave Monster, it was time to test out Danger Zone, and uh, the first opponent was a horizontal spinner, which drums typically have an advantage against, and eventually I was able to hit him up, and he landed on the top of my robot, and I was able to win that one by driving into the pit. Fortunately, the first match of my brother's robot, Red Rum, was not quite as successful. And Crave Monster had to face that same vertical spinner next. And immediately he rips off the little arm that actuates the lip of the dustpan up and down. The spinner chewed completely through the wall of the dustpan, allowing him to be broke free. And that was completely Definitely awesome. Complete also, the metal lip of the dustpan <laughs> seems to be lying on the ground, so that fell off. Oh, he might have control of the weapon too. Oh. He's heading for the door, but the active weapon bot is very heavy. Very dense metal. If only that lip of the dustpan was still on to keep the wheel from touching the ground. One minute remaining in the match. Come on. Come on, there we go, there we go. Oh, here we go. I think we're heading for the door. Oh, boy. Oh, he's got him over the door, but he can't quite get him in. <laughs> I sit here for a good 30 seconds, just opening and closing that mouth until he finally falls in. And there he goes. Yeah! The match goes to the Grave Monster. And here's the damage. The front lip of that dustpan is completely gone, as is the right wall. My next match for Danger Zone was against Bit Air. Last year, Bit Air destroyed last year's Danger Zone. This year, both robots were completely new, but the results were pretty much the same. Yay! Finally hit one of the teeth on my drum. And here I do take the metal wedge off a bit air. But ultimately, Danger Zone only has one wheel, is inverted, and is totally destroyed. Let's check out the aftermath and see all the things that went wrong. First, the armor wasn't flush enough against the ground, and the corner points that I said wouldn't be weak were weak. Also, the armor wasn't sufficiently held to the body. Second, the belt guides were exposed and 3D printed. Third, the drive motor axles were weak and unsupported. 
Fourth, the belt wasn't recessed into the drum and so was vulnerable and broke. Fifth, the holes that I added to the drum mount to meet weight made it too weak. Sixth, the motor mount was too thin. Also with this whole thing, I was overconfident in the SLS 3D printed nylon, which I hadn't used before. Seventh, the three millimeter steel axle was absolutely not sufficient. And there are more takeaways just regarding the general design, but let's get back to robot fighting. I haven't mentioned it till now, but my brother did bring the best or nothing again, but that quickly got both its wheels buzzed off by 10 days till destruction. This was okay by us, this was a joke robot made very quickly. Back with the Crave Monster, I knew my next round was against a pusher wedge bot, so I worked really hard to make sure I had a lower wedge on the front of what remained of my dustpan. And here we see why I originally had the front lip of the dustpan able to actuate up and down. Without it, the wheels of the enemy robot remain on the ground and they can drag me all around. Now, a bot can only maintain control for a maximum of 10 seconds on another bot. He's let go for now. Trap door's gonna open in five seconds. We're both getting awfully close. Trap door's open. Crave got it again. Uh oh. That's what might be in danger. Crave monster's got some bite to him. Oh, he's got him again. If he can just get him in the right direction. Traction seems to be a problem. At this point, both the rubber band treads on the left wheels had been pushed off due to being pushed sideways. You can see one of the rubber bands just sitting on the ground there, and this made it pretty difficult to actually control him. 55 seconds. Oh, and he breaks loose again. I'm not sure Kellogg would approve of this use of their cereal. And Grim getting pushed around now. And this was really scary because the Crave Monster is not invertible. If Bachelor can get him on top, he might gain control back. Bachelor has a very low wedge on the front of his bot, so it's good for getting underneath other bots and moving them where you want them to go. 15 seconds left. Crave Monster's got a hold of Bachelor again. Chomping down on him like there's no tomorrow. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. This one did go to the judges where Crave won. I then got the Crave Monster ready to face the horizontal spinner 1001 cuts by adding um, duct tape armor. Yeah, I was just hoping that would hold all the little pieces together. Three, oh, yeah, and this is the finals one, of the winner's bracket. Five, <laughs> and the duct tape failed. The right side of the dustpan fell off. Yes. Got him. Still 10 seconds left until the door opens. So he can't maintain the control. Five seconds. Crane has him. Crane has got him. Oh, he's on the door. Uh oh. I glued the foam dustpan together and then went up against the winner of the loser's bracket, which was 10 days till destruction. After that unstick, I noticed that the metal wedge of the dustpan was pretty chewed up. And 
here's the chewed up body after that fight. None of these gouges really affected the function of the robot because all of my electrical components were so far inboard. Also, it was still intact enough for the rumble. I knew this would be a bad idea because the front end had taken a lot of abuse and it was fine, but the back end wasn't going to survive spinners very well. But who cares, rumbles are fine. Oh crap, no, here comes Spinook, the hockey puck of death. Oh, well that was quick, Spinook took out the left side wheels. At this point, Bit Air randomly flies into the mouth, and I should not have let him go. Bit Air then drives under the robot and knocks out the remaining wheels and destroys my second of two robots that day. The hockey puck of death, Spinook, remains and ends up winning the rumble. And in conclusion, full body spinners are awesome. But if you really want to win, enter a box of cereal.